Yeah, Bronze, let's start with the, the scrimmage today. What you saw out of this? I saw a couple of good goals. Sam Adrenian, sister Joe Hafferty. Joe Hafferty with a good goal, sister Reed. So that was good. Uh, I thought the fitness component was good. We'll check, double check the data, the numbers and all that. But I think from the eye test, the guys worked hard. They're probably in the right spot based on, you know, experiences through preseason. It looked like it was a first go out, go out, go around and 45 minutes was good. We, we went continuous 45, not 22, 22. I think that pushes them a little more. There's no time for that little break in the middle, so it was good. You mentioned the goal scorers there. What other young players stood out today, if any? I mean, the Orange team had a lot of young kids on it. I mean, Juan and, you know, Ethan and Hal. And, I mean, the whole team, I thought the whole Orange team played well. I was very impressed. Brian, you, you, you obviously are just a week or so into this. Um, is there any way you could figure out how guys are mixing in? Are you missing too many guys? I, mean, are you I think we're missing too many guys yeah. yet. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so what look, it's, do, it's right? not just the actual numbers, but it's who it is. Like, we're hopeful for Nico to come back, and Raul didn't play today because he's on a separate timeline, and Jordan, Christian, Javi, Yaimar, you know, so it's 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 who it is, not just the sheer numbers. So I think it's a little early. And then you will work on that in the next In Tucson. A lot of the guys, well, some of the guys will come from Tucson, then the other guys will come back after the international window and join us in the second phase of preseason in Palm Springs. So I think I saw Josh uh, out walking around. Um, how, many, how, how many of the non-internationals are you still kind of waiting on to to join up with Nico. I don't have my notes. No, he is not back with us yet. He will probably join up with the fines. We'll make that we'll make that determination when 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 it's ready. Yeah, today was he was in his natural formation four two three one. So we will take a look at the tape, Jada, and assess that and try and coach him up. But that's probably a better formation for him than what we played last year in our little house trick shape. So you um, also before last season you mixed uh, the team and didn't have like separate you know this is going to be the, the first team and this is going to be the, the second team in terms of how you approach uh, the tournaments that you play. Do you think that you'll do that again as far as just having an open idea and these players look good so that, that they're going to play this game? That's absolutely the way we're going to do it Jada. <laughs> if, a, if a kid or a 20 something year old or a 30 something is playing in a good form and it's the right game that group of players is going to come in we're not going to have first team second team there are you know look there is some reality when guys are going to start you know the senior guys already on the roster that will get the first opportunity but again we're going to need everybody with the compressed schedule so right away if you're looking at the first three games you've got to travel down to honduras away game on a thursday back home for a thursday and then an opener against a very good team on a sunday so just in that stretch of three games, how do we mix and match the you know lineups and all that? That'll be something that we talk about as preseason goes along. Based on that answer, how much of an advantage is it to be able to play potentially two different formations or more different formations to so other teams? Well, that's what I'm keeping in my back pocket, Jackson. That's a great question. Um, to Jada's point, I don't know exactly you know what the final formation is it might be a combination of both we might play this way one time and this time another so we'll we'll work on that brian being the tournament seen so many guys probably through the international break what's the goals for for tucson for the group that you're taking down and then how important will fitness, that second fitness assessment and individual development we, we talked that through, we've got the plan already. It's it's fitness, individual development, and assessment. And then how critical will that second stint in Palm Springs? Very critical. We'll, we'll have one final tune-up game in Palm Springs prior to, prior to uh, 
I'm going to Honduras. And that game will be kind of, you know, who we play in that game probably dictates who's going to start against Honduras. And then the home leg might be a little different just because it's at home. Bring some guys in for that. Will Bruin been to this club. We just got the email. that He's yeah. official now. Um, I'll put a smile on my face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Will was a, you know, again, a free agent, kind of like Stephen Cleveland. There was talk about Will moving on somewhere else. And, you know, he had options. And so I'm very pleased that, you know, they somehow came to it agreement and he's staying here. I'm very pleased about that. I don't know if you addressed this yesterday, but how did the conversations go with Andy about him joining the, the coaching staff? Andy stand? Rose? Yeah. I give him grief every day. I put him under pressure in the coach's office. He's got a, I'm putting his feet to the fire to see. And when I walk in there after this, the first question I'm going to ask is, hey, Andy, how'd you think the game went? Let's see what he says. You, uh, you appreciated the, um, the, different thought process that Gon uh, yeah, Gonzo and um, Jimmy had last year. Do you think you could get that out of Andy too? Well, I'm not going to compare those two with Andy. Gonzo and Jimmy in their own right were tremendous people for this club, tremendous coaches. They absolutely worked every day for the success of this club. And I think Andy's going to do the same. There are differences in personality and experiences and all of that. That's different. Andy brings some youthful enthusiasm. He's actually going through his UEFA courses as well. He's going to sign up for his UEFA Pro. So there's some similarity there because Gonzo and Jimmy were doing the same thing when they were coming up through, through our organization. But they're all different people. And so everybody has a different skill set. We're working Andy in. He's been a great addition. I imagine you had no shortage of candidates for that position. Uh, what stood out about Andy and um, like what ultimately trust? I trust Andy. He's been here. I know him. There were a lot of candidates. There were a lot of people I talked to in the off season. Uh, lots of people contacted us. Um, but at the end of the day, I thought he was a good choice. Was there anything? I was, when, I know when, when uh, Jimmy and Gonzo were here, there was seemed to be sort of like a uh, like everyone had sort of their lane that they specialized in even if you were all kind of working together is it is that the same setup now like is is he more working with the defense or offense or how does that we're work? gonna we're gonna take that as it comes i might have Precky and freddie do offense defense and andy kind of filling in we'll see it's still early andy obviously played center back later in his career he played in midfield he could do any one of those two believe it or not Precky being an offensive player all his life, knows what good defense is. So we'll make those adjustments as we go. I haven't, you know, I don't want to pigeonhole them, you know, into certain certain things if they're not ready. So we'll work that through. How long that, did you figure out or think that you missed anything uh, last season that you wanted to fill with that last spot, you know, and in evaluating the way that y'all finished? You know, we we're going to have two spots. We're going to try and you know, fill John Hutchinson's role again and have another assistant, but that went by the wayside. Henry stepped in and done a good job there. Uh, I thought about the balance of younger coach versus a more experienced coach. You know, there was lots of discussions, but we settled on the right candidate. Has Henry been Last officially added to the first team? No, himself? he's still in his development role and head of academy, but, you know, that role that John Hutchinson did is... You know, they're supposed to be laser focused on development. And that's that's what he has to do. He has to make sure that all the young players that we have don't, don't fall through the cracks. You know, along those lines, uh, you guys have always utilized loans to some degree, but it, it does feel like it's becoming a numbers thing where you have so many kind of pro-ready players coming through the system and, and players that the defines kind of pushing upwards. Is that Do you imagine that loans will become a bigger part of the kind of... Uh, I developmental so. process? I think so. There'll be some news coming out here in the next you know, week or so about some loans for young players from our squad, yes. Um, you saw Sota out here today, had a stint in Austrian, Austria last year. He looks good this preseason. So we'll continue to do that. 